After the end of World War II, the world was split into two, East and West. This marked the beginning of the era called the Cold War. Hello friends, happy 2024, and in the spirit of the upcoming Metal Gear Solid 3 remake that's due out sometime this year, I thought I'd run through the original game on extreme difficulty for anyone who might be chasing the Foxhound trophy, or maybe you'd just like to sit back and reminisce with me a little bit. On my relatively short list of favorite games of all time, this one's been on it for the past 20 years, and I don't see that ever changing. I am so excited for what they're calling Metal Gear Solid Delta, the remake of this friggin' masterpiece, and I just could not contain myself when I noticed the Master Collection was on holiday sale recently on Steam. Picked up Snake Eater for $14.99, and have been having a ball reliving this classic. Got it fully decked out with some cool mods from the community. We've got several graphical upgrades and audio restoration that gives the game kind of a fresh coat of paint. I laughed when I got the game installed and saw zero of 51 achievements. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw that post where I was practically licking my chops at yet another opportunity to 100 this game on a new platform. Just completed that task the other day and felt like making a second run on Extreme to see if I can improve on that total time stat, which was 3 hours and 50 minutes. I was only shooting for that final achievement, which was Foxhound, and only really focused on keeping the time under 5 hours, but today I'm curious to see how much of it I can trim off. This will be a total walkthrough with zero alerts. Zero kills, zero continues, less than 25 saves, and zero meals if I can pull that off. Although that's not the requirement. I think the max meals you can eat is 20, but I've also read that that requirement's been removed for the Master Collection. Don't know if that's true or not, but honestly it doesn't matter. I'll be keeping the food intake under that number regardless, so no worries there. <laughs> it's kind of funny to realize I've been playing this game for 20 years, and this is only my second run on Extreme. I've only ever played it on Normal over the years until the Foxhound rank was made an actual trophy slash achievement on the Master Collection here. So only now did it become necessary to step up my game on Extreme and, and snag that achievement. This walkthrough will have partial commentary. After I get done blabbering over the opening here, I'll bring the game sound up and I'll pop in here and there whenever I feel like there's something kind of noteworthy to point out about what I'm doing. And I say that because some of the walkthroughs I took a look at when I was prepping for the first run were gameplay only. And there were a couple of instances where I kind of had questions about something I saw the player do and it actually could have saved me some time if uh, the person had dropped in a quick, oh, by the way. So, I'll try to anticipate any possible questions that you may have. I'll address anything that I feel might need a little explaining. But, as always, if you have a question about something you see me do and I don't talk about it on the video, you can leave a question in the comments and I'll reply. First noteworthy thing to mention here is, obviously, to keep your time under 5 hours, you'll need to skip all the cutscenes and radio conversations. You can hit just about any button to skip the cutscenes, and the radio calls can be skimmed through by holding the Y button if you're playing on a PC or Xbox controller, whereas it'll be the triangle button on a PlayStation controller. On extreme difficulty, the guards have a much higher state of awareness. If you're in direct view, they will notice you from much further away than what you may be used to on normal difficulty, so you've got to take extra care in staying out of their line of sight, pretty much no matter where you are on screen which makes the leaning you're seeing me do right now detrimental in staying out of their direct view. Now, having said that, they're still pretty dumb overall, which you'll see examples of as we move along and, and start to really get into the game here. But for now, good rule of thumb to keep in mind is simply don't let them see you. Make good use of your camouflage, especially those extra ones you get in the very beginning when you select Metal Gear Solid 3 is my favorite.
He's a If this is your first run on Extreme, I recommend you make your first save right here at the end of the Virtuous mission. Getting used to the higher difficulty be a little frustrating at first, and if you wait till the Ocelot unit fights shortly into Operation Snake Eater to save like a lot of walkthroughs tend to do, you might find yourself replaying the Virtuous mission several times before making it there without an alert, which can become quite a headache. Though it might not sound like it, 25 saves is pretty generous actually, so there's no harm in burning one once you complete the Virtuous mission with no mistakes. Here's the first example of how dumb these soldiers are, even on extreme. <laughs> Notice I'm standing behind the tree and about to toss a stun grenade in between them, but with the lean, I mean, check this out. Literally right in front of them, and they don't see me. <laughs> By the way, when you throw a stun grenade or you have one thrown at you, turn away from it before it goes off and you won't be affected by it. As we go over here to this other guy, again, feet in front of him. <laughs> He don't see nothing. Didn't hear me running up to that tree either. It's all for this area. And another example on the lack of intelligence. Using the D-pad to kind of inch up here until this soldier notices me. And as he begins to investigate. Now his back is turned, I get it. Their backs are turned at this point. But watch this. Running around this tree, literally feet away. Running at full speed. Neither one of them hear nothing. I've got to be in line of sight with one of them by now. And they don't see me. So, even though you do have to be really careful about being in their view from long distances. As you can see, there's many, many ways to skirt around them undetected. And in this area, we've got three items that we want to make sure to pick up. Uh, first of which is going to be up these stairs here. This is going to be the AK-47, which is going to come in handy to help us defeat the fear with very little effort. Actually, you can beat them in seconds using this and a stun grenade and the fake death pill. But we'll see that a little bit later. And our next item here is going to be this box. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. That happens every freaking time. This area is so sensitive. It's like snakes walking a tightrope on top of those crates. But item number three is going to be these thermal goggles. I highly, highly recommend getting all three of these before you leave this area. You going to save?
Good luck. Thanks. Another quick tip here. I usually go in and unequip the 1911 anytime I notice it on the weapons list. Uh, the game tends to kind of randomly equip it for you from time to time, and I'm really not sure why. I get right here because in story, she, this is where Eva gives it to you, but there's other areas of the game I notice it's popped back up on that weapons menu, and uh, I like to go in and unequip it so as not to make the mistake accidentally selecting it, thinking it's the MK-22, and accidentally blowing somebody's brains out. Because again, this is a deathless, no-kills run for the Foxhound rank. I hope you're not busy for about a month. <laughs> Shit, I'm gonna die, man. And by the way, the crouch walk that you're seeing me do here, this is a mod for the PC version. I believe this was pulled from the uh, 3DS port of Metal Gear Solid 3 from like 2012 or something. Uh, there's no tactical advantage to having it. It's basically just a faster version of the crawl. So if you're trying to figure out how to do it, don't waste your time. <laughs> Unless you're playing it on PC, in which case there is a cool mod you can get uh, that you just drop into the, the main game directory that gives you the ability to do it. If there's one item you definitely want to be on the lookout for, it's the suppressor for the MK-22. Speaking from experience, <laughs> you don't want to be in a large area that's populated with a lot of guards and have your last suppressor go out on you. That sucks. So, it's definitely worth... There we go. It's definitely worth shaking down a guard or two in each area. I try not to be in the habit of shaking down all of them just because it gets tedious and eats up your game time, but good rule of thumb is I like to try at least one or two, and more often than not you'll get one, especially if you avoid going out of your way to pick up weapons that you won't be using, you know, like some of the other rifles and whatnot. Um, just the ones that I pick up here in the run are, uh, are the ones I'd recommend staying with, because the game only gives you item drops for the weapons that you've actually found, so... If you don't bother picking up stuff like, say, the XM-16 or the SVD sniper rifle, you'll never see an item drop for them, and that only ups your chances of getting the stuff you actually need for the tranquilizer gun.
wrong? What's wrong? And here's a spot where the game was coded smart enough to not screw you over. As you see, the card's all laid up on that electric fence there, but it's not killing him. Because even though we tranked him, we didn't actually place him there. As silly as that sounds, but since the contact is incidental, the game isn't programmed to register a kill in that sense. And I mention it now because it's something we're actually going to see pop up again later. Uh, there's some barrels we're going to blow up right outside of the warehouse, and uh, a couple guards are actually going to die as a result, but won't count against us. You going to save? Good luck. Thanks. Try to stay in the habit of unequipping your suppressor during boss battles. Remembering to do that will go a long way in extending their lifespan. Definitely worth taking a couple of seconds to do. Can't hide forever.
Highly recommend taking advantage of the healing radio frequencies, as each one can be used once to replenish a good portion of your stamina. This saves you from having to eat the food, which used to count against you after 20 mils in the original game, but as I mentioned earlier, people are now saying that requirement's been removed for the Master Collection here, but I'll still honor the old challenge. I don't know, kind of makes it more fun that way. Also, I actually took the time to print out all the frequencies for my second run here, because during the first playthrough I, I found I was fumbling around on my phone a lot and just ended up costing myself a lot of time. So, this makes for a nice cheat sheet. You going to save?
I'm going to save here in case this doesn't go right. This is the barrel explosion I talked about earlier, where we're going to kill a few guards using incidental force, which isn't going to count as actual kills. And another cool perk is it knocks off a little bit of the end's stamina, since he catches some of the blast shrapnel. And we'll see that later on when the fight with him starts. You ever heard of Godzilla, King of Monsters? Go ahead and hold R2 as you close out of the save screen so you can quickly access the weapon menu. Make sure the MK-22 is selected and take out the first guard here pretty quickly. Once he's down, switch to the 1911 and take out the barrels on both sides here. And be careful not to shoot any guards. <laughs> and you'll know you've done everything right if you hear the end sound like he's rubbing one out up there. Mission accomplished. And if you're wondering why I'm using the box here, Wearing it allows Snake to keep pace when he's running up steps or hills. No slowdown. And really comes in handy later when you have to chase the end around all over the frickin' jungle. Not huh? so Hey, stop! Come on back to the lab.
can't even begin to describe how elated I am to find out how easy it is to literally blaze through this lab. This area was always a point of contention for me because I knew at some point one of these wimpy ass scientists was going to cause an alert. It seemed like it was inevitable. I mean, it's comical to me just how quickly you can zip right through here without acknowledging anyone. Love it. And another brilliant guard post. <laughs> This guy's looking right at me. Doesn't see shit. <laughs>
And at this point, we've seen the save animation a few times now, so I'll probably skip over that in post so it doesn't become annoying to set through. It's kind of tedious. You'll still see the points that I save at, and I'll mark those in the YouTube chapters, but I'll go ahead and transition ahead to keep the flow going. As we see at the start of the battle with the end here, his stamina is slightly depleted after the barrel explosion outside the warehouse. Not a crazy handicap, but we'll take it. Also, the end always starts the fight in the same sniping position. So we're going to run around the area and creep up behind him, hit him with a stun grenade SIG gas combo that'll really take it out of him. Sucks that I don't have a full supply of stun grenades to weaken him even more, but this'll do. Sneaking up on him using the weird grenade glitch that's not been patched in any port I've ever seen for this game. When you prime a grenade and hold it, your footsteps are silenced. Hey, they put it in here, so we'll use it. Freeze! Huh? How did you... Try this on for size. Tell them size fives. Another thing I recommend you do before finishing him off is hold him up and force him to drop his camo. When you wear it, you gain back stamina naturally, which not only eliminates the need for healing radio and food, helps keep that aim steady. Freeze! Huh? How did you... Ooh. 
I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, here.
saving the game, Snake?
wrong.
Well, of all the great characters in this game, here's one I've always found completely freaking lame. Because the, the rest of the Cobra unit, you know, you've got the pain, the fear, the end, the boss, I mean, even the sorrow, like, who's not even alive, right? They're all featured in cutscenes with some dialogue throughout the game, good character development. By the time you encounter each one, you, you kind of already know them a little, you know, and you've at least been privy to the cool abilities that they have, most of which are supernatural in some way, you know, like comic book characters. Then you get to this guy. And literally, he's just some regular goof in a spacesuit with a flamethrower just acting all pissed off. I mean, did no character development at all, really. Because I, I think the only time you even see him prior to this is at the end of the Virtuous mission when you barely catch a glimpse of him in the helicopter. You know, you've got the rest of the Cobras. They're, they're speaking one at a time, kind of introducing themselves, but it's like he's not even there. Kind of feels like Kojima was out of ideas by the time he got to the Fury when he was putting this boss unit together. But anyway, the fight with him can go bad in a hurry if you're not extra careful. Might take a few tries to get the feel down, and eventually you'll realize that you don't have to run from him nearly as much as it might seem. When you find that comfort zone, you'll see it's more about anticipating where he's going to be and being ready to nail his ass when you see an opening. It was switching over to that mentality is what finally turned the corner for me because this guy used to be a pain in the ass, and he still can be, but not today.
Sir. All I want. Tell me! Stop it! Who have you been talking to? He doesn't know what you're talking about. You'd better start talking. Please, stop this! Who is Khrushchev's lapdog? How can you do this to him? I know you gave the data to someone. Never do you. that. You monster. <laughs> I guess he's dead. <laughs> Now then, I hope you'll prove more entertaining than he was. But first, let's take a look at your body, shall we? What a beautiful body you have, like a newborn baby. <laughs> but not for long. You're right here, just when you hear Volgan say, Well then. Let's get started. If you hold L2 or R2 to bring up either the item menu or the weapon menu, you'll not take any damage while Volgan's teeing off on you right here. And honestly, I'm not sure what advantage that gives you other than, I guess, the satisfaction of knowing that he's not hurting your life bar. I've tested it both ways, and what little damage he does do to the bar when you don't hold the button, I mean, it doesn't seem to hamper you in any way or, or change anything about your escape, so... Personal preference, I guess. But even you must have your limits. And I am a patient man. Man, here's a game that takes me back. And I know I say that a lot, especially when talking about old school NES games, you know. Those of you who've been with me over the years, you know, you've heard me call back to the good old days, you know, back in the 80s and... It's kind of a blanket statement, and you know you, you could incorporate a lot with that, but this game's a little different because I can pinpoint the exact time period and some specific things that were going on in my life back then. The year was 2004, and putting that in perspective for you, George W. Bush had just won his second term as U.S. President. The iconic TV show Friends had just finished its 10th and final season. Michael Jordan had just retired from the NBA the year before, while Mike Tyson was actually still fighting and about a year away from retiring from boxing. Rod Stewart, of all people, had a number one album on the U.S. Billboard charts. The number one movie in America was The Incredibles, and the average price for a gallon of gasoline was $1.88. World of Warcraft had just gotten released, and the highest-selling video game on the PlayStation 2 also hit store shelves, goes by the name of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Whew, 20 years ago. 2004 for me personally. I had recently left a dead-end job that I spent way too much time at. I mean, something like six years, I think. I was happily collecting unemployment and enjoying a nice, long, well-deserved vacation. <laughs> Seriously, man, I, I think I sat off work for something like 10 months altogether. And this game came out right in the middle of that stretch. I wasn't married, no kids, which meant I could completely lose myself in the game and enjoy it as much as I wanted, and boy, did I ever. I think the legendary GTA San Andreas, which had just come out about three weeks before Snake Eater, started collecting dust when this game dropped. I don't know if I ever went back to it again, to be honest. I don't recall ever finishing it, because I was too engrossed with this one. So many nights, I'd, I'd make sure I had no plans, order me some takeout, and play Snake Eater all friggin' night. Man, those were good days. 
you know, because for most of us, there's not too many stretches in life post childhood where we can live pretty carefree and not really worry about too much. But that for me was one of those times. And anytime I ever play this game, that's the time period I think about. And it's nothing but good vibes. Hey, eat up! Huh? Well, it's your loss. to be extremely fast right here in order to pull this off without an alert. Saving immediately when you step out of there is mandatory. When this area loads back up, you should already have your finger on R2, select a food item, throw it immediately, and then just as quick, hold R2 again to select the smoke grenades, prime one, and start moving right away. And this will probably frustrate you quite a bit until you get it down, but keep at it. You'll get the hang of it. This next one can be a little tricky. You see how I'm kind of running right towards that tire? That's the sweet spot that you want to aim for in order to trigger two guards to the right of you to start moving in your direction. Because if you're too far to the right of that tire, you're going to be too close to them and it'll trigger an alert. But if you're too far to the left of it, you'll only trigger one of them to leave their spot and not the other, which will totally screw this up. So definitely remember that tire.
A quick method to bypass the sorrow is to go underwater and drown yourself, then use the revival pill. A lot of people do that. But doing so does make you miss out on the spirit camo, which silences your footsteps. It's really fun to use in New Game Plus if you've got the stealth camo to go along with it, because using both together puts you in predator mode, makes you virtually undetectable while you're moving around. <laughs> it gets pretty funny messing with guards when you're basically a ghost out there. They have no idea what's going on, so... For me, that alone makes it worth taking the time to do this. And another good reason to play this sequence out is to double check yourself. Because if you're going for no kills, it's a great way to verify that you haven't accidentally iced anyone. If you're on track, you should only see the four boss characters who are dead regardless of which method you use to beat them. That's fine. <laughs> if you see any guards walk by though, you did a bad thing.
during the last You going to save? get him three times with the nagant and if you remove the mask quick enough you can avoid him flipping out and trying to fucking Liu Kang your ass with this crazy flying kick he does. I kind of botched it up there but looks like we're in the clear. important that you grab the Cold War camo here. Don't miss it. We're about to go into the bike chase scenes where a lot of people are going to be shooting at you. They'll hold their fire as long as you're facing them with a the hammer and sickle.
the last case of people dying due to what the game sees as incidental contact. You can trank anyone on a moving vehicle and even though they probably die when they fall off, it does not count against you as an actual kill. So make sure you've got the MK-22 equipped and fire away.
You going to save?
You going to save? Can I have seconds? Sure, baby. Make sure you get these two guys down here before they wander off. If they do, it'll be really easy to forget about them by the time you get to the next area, and eventually they'll circle back around on you and cause problems, so lay them out here before they get away.
Oh, well, not bad at all. You going to save? <clears throat> well, what can I say about the boss? Other than she's one of the most badass characters in the history of everything. And that's the bad thing about a speedrun. For anyone who might be watching this who've never played through this game before, you haven't been privy to any of the story since I've had to skip over all the cutscenes and the radio conversations. Because there's something like... I don't know, six and a half hours of cutscenes in this game. So you can't even begin to understand or appreciate the boss character without all that. As for the fight itself, I tend to avoid trying to lock up with her as much as possible. <laughs> Usually just end up settling into a sniper duel. I seem to enjoy that more. Having a high camo index is pretty key here. Hence me going out of my way way back at the waterfall when I jump back in the water to uh, pick up the kabuki face paint. Gives you a little added stealth with the snow camo as you kind of navigate this sea of snow flowers here, if you will. gotten stronger. Where did 
did you go? close. There's only room for one boss and one snake. I'm going to speed through the credits scene here and mute the audio. For one, I'm sure the song that's playing is copyrighted. And we'll get the little pink panties of the lame YouTube bots all soiled and in a twist. And two, I do find it annoying that you can't skip the credits here for whatever reason. I mean, you, you, you can skip just about everything else in the ending. But for some reason, Kojima be like, You will watch credits! I'm thinking no, boss. But the song that's normally playing here, it's fitting after that story. 
Yes, Grozny Grad and the Granin Research Facility have both been wiped out without a trace. I understand, sir, but they were necessary sacrifices. Yes, the CIA has taken care of the boss themselves. I believe the White House will be satisfied. Khrushchev is finished. Your time has finally arrived. Yes, the American president is relying on us to keep a lid on the whole affair. We've got him by the balls. It should make a valuable trump card in future negotiations. Yes, Chief Director, of course. I'll keep the KGB informed. Yes, it's me. The boss has accomplished her mission. The philosopher's legacy is now safely with us, in America's hands. With this money, yes, the philosophers can finally be revived. The film we handed the Chinese was a fake. Peking must be in an uproar right about now. I'm afraid so. Only half the money has made it back to the United States. The KGB must still have part of the legacy. Yes, the weapon has been reduced to ashes. That's right. Grozny Grad has been obliterated by the Davy Crockett we brought in as well. Yes, that was the boss's work, too. Speaking of which, I've obtained something from Granin that you might find interesting. It's a revolutionary new nuclear attack system. Perhaps it might just come in handy someday. Yes, we have John, I mean Snake, to thank for that. Khrushchev believed it as well. Yes, they bought our story. I don't think they'll be making a fuss. The secondary alert has been lifted as well. And the Soviets still haven't discovered my true identity. They have no idea that I've been triple crossing them. I will continue my activities as a contact for the new government. Yes, it appears that no one knew that I was Adam. Of course, I am always at the CIA's disposal, Mr. Director. And if you did everything right, the Foxhound Trophy should pop right here. Very good. And shaved almost 90 minutes off my first run. Kick ass. I'll take it. This is Metal Gear Solid 3 on Extreme. This is a game that I'll never not enjoy playing through. If you haven't had a chance to check out the Master Collection yet, I highly recommend giving it a look. I think it's great that they re-released this game and we've got the remake on the way. Uh, we're 20 years later, like I stated before. Not only is it a chance for us old vets to relive the classic, it's a golden opportunity for a brand new generation to discover how wonderful this game is. Hope the guide helped you out and gave you some pointers on earning the Foxhound achievement. And if nothing else, Hope it cured a little boredom. To Mr. Kojima, a very heartfelt thank you for this masterpiece of a game. Screw Konami for the way they treated you. And although I could not be more uninterested in Death Stranding if I tried, one thing that'll never change is Metal Gear Solid 3 is one of the greatest video games ever made. And I'm hyped like a kid waiting on Christmas for that Delta remake. To my subscribers, I hope you all had a great new year. It's nice to be back after a little sabbatical. 2024 is looking to be an active year for the channel. Got some cool projects coming up that I'm pretty excited to get into. So, looking forward to doing that. Till then, take care and be well, everyone. We'll see you soon.